Hi everybody, this is Gardy Raymond for ConsequenceVideoDesigns.com and today I'm going to show you how to do the titles like they did in the epic snowboard movie The Art of Flight. So real quick, let's look at what they did here. Now in this video here you want to pay attention to people's titles obviously so let's just let this play through. If you want authenticity you have to initiate it. All right, so you can see that looks amazing. Great music, great snowboarding. If you're into snowboarding or skiing at all and you haven't seen The Art of Flight, it came out uh, about two years ago now, maybe three, and it's an absolutely amazing movie, so definitely check it out. So you can see what they did here is, in this particular instance, uh, it the words go away or the letters go away, but in most of them, they're formed by using plexus. And you can see they've used a tremendous amount of plexus throughout this entire piece, uh, incorporating it not only with the text, but with pieces of snow into the scene here, connecting the mountain peaks as the sea forms together. Uh, it's, it's just a, a really nice looking piece. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. And I obviously don't have this footage, so I had done this myself with a different piece of footage here for Cannondale Pro Cycling. So real quick, here's what I put together. I was able to make the words come on, the words form on using Plexus, and then incorporate some of the scene into with the titles, have it connect to the titles and, and uh, kind of animate with the motion of the scene. So. Let's just jump right in. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of time to get everything set up, but once you do, uh, you can see how, how easy it is to do it with pretty much everything else. So we'll take the raw footage, dump it into our new comp. We have a new comp here. Good to go. All right. Now, first thing, we want to create our titles. Cannondale. I'm using News Gothic MT. It's a nice thin font here. Uh, duplicate this, pro cycling, right down here, want to scale down my Cannondale a little bit, we're about this big, and then just to make sure we're set up, let's go to our align tab and align everything so it's left justified. Okay, now before we start uh, to actually place this in the shot, we should do the plexus. We should build the plexus for the title build on separately from incorporating it with the footage. And the reason to do that is because plexus is applied to a solid, a singular solid layer, which typically ends up being comp size. That's just how it usually work. You can make it bigger than comp size, but then you got to worry about it going off the screen and, and uh, you can't really see what's going on. So what I'd like to do, I've ended up doing a lot of these titles recently, and what I like to do is start with my titles in the center of the screen. We can even turn off this background. Uh, let's make a white solid, since we're using black text, and put it in the background here. And we're going to right-click on this and select a guide layer. So if, if we forget to turn this layer off or um, we forget to delete it once we do our final render, it's not going to render it out. That's just that's what a guide layer is. So the next thing we need to do is uh, 
Well, we, we can do it in really in any order, but let's create a plexus layer. So command Y to create a new layer. Let's name it plexus. Let's make it black. Okay, and we'll go to effect, robite, plexus. All right, and then our basic plexus toolkit pops up here. Now, if you're familiar at all with plexus, you know that you can, uh, this is plexus uh, version two. Um, so you can use layers pass, OBJs, uh, make basic primitives um, with their uh, with the toolkit here. But what we want to do is use masks of these letters um, because you can see from my example, I have the P R O and the C and the A are the letters that are forming on. Right, so we don't need to worry about the rest of them. But we do need to worry about these five letters. So now we can take a whole bunch of lights and set them up along each, each uh, outline of the letters, uh, try to get it right, and then connect all the lights um, using the, the points and the lines renderer here. But the, a lot easier way to do that is to right click on your text layer, create masks from text. And it creates a new layer that is we solo this here. It's just this layer that's comprised of masks that we hit M to reveal the masks here and then the tilde key to maximize this screen. Uh, you can see all the masks that it creates and labels them appropriately for each letter. So we want to do the same thing. Let's uh, unsolo this. We want to do the same thing for Pro Cycling. Right click, create masks from text. And we can turn this text back on. This defaults to white, but it doesn't really matter. Let's drag it to the bottom because we don't need these layers for anything other than the masks that were created with them. So we can turn them off. So we know the letters that we want to form on, which is the C A P R O. So what we can do here is hit M to reveal the masks on Pro Cycling and select the P. There's going to be two masks for letters that have holes cut out of them, P, R, O, uh, you know, D's, A's. So select both P masks, R, both R masks, and both O masks. Uh, oops. We need to Command C to copy those masks. And then on the plexus layer, paste the masks. And it pastes the masks right in the same place as they were created on the outline layer. So it's perfect. We don't have to move anything. It's all lined up great. Now from Cannondale, we want to hit M again to reveal the masks. We want C and both A masks. Copy. Back to Plexus. Paste. So we have C, A, P, R, O. Awesome. All set up. Now, it's easy enough to start setting up this Plexus. So we come up here, add geometry, paths, and we can just leave it on all masks. Um, let's turn off these and command shift H to hide the masks. Uh, points render, let's turn these path object black because we're gonna want the plexus to be the same color as the text that we're using. Okay, uh, and now by default it puts a hundred points on each mask, so that's way too many. Uh, I think we want maybe 15 points on each mask, so you can just see the outlines of the C and the A, PRL. All right, now the thing about Plexus is it just takes a little bit of tweaking. You got to go through and tweak settings here, tweak in there to get it to to be how you want it to be. So we're just going to go through and change some of these. I think point size, I want to be one. Um, we want to add a lines renderer. All right, so that automatically connects all of them. Um, let's see, max number of vertices. Let's do maybe eight. So we thin it out a little bit. Uh, max distance, yeah, it seems about right. We'll have to adjust this later once we start animating it. 
I think I want the line thickness to about 0.5, so it makes it a little bit thinner there. You, know, you start to make these thick, and it's just you can't you can't see anything. So let's make it 0.5. Um, we're going to leave these uh, the thickness over distance and the opacity over distance uh, as defaults. Um, sometimes it's nice to to change the settings. Um, but you'll see, because these points are so close together, uh, in terms of the maximum distance here, we don't have a lot of lines showing up. Uh, they're only connecting between the lines that are that are uh, farther apart, not the lines that are closer together. So if we uh, did that, see they start to show up a little bit better here. Um, but let's just make it back to default um, and opacity as well, back to default. Maybe... Um, Maybe like that a little bit, and maybe cut it off. Don't ever let them get too fully opaque. Um, trying to do this with your mouse isn't the best, but you can hit smooth a little bit, smooth the lines out. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter. Just kind of however you feel like it should look. All right. Easy peasy, right? Um, and you know what? I feel like I want the C and the A to be connected to one another and the P and R and O to be connected to one another but I don't want the C and A connected to the P and the R. I, I feel like I want them to be different in different groups. So we can do it one of two ways. We can duplicate our path object and we can make a new path object for each letter for the P, the R, the O, the C and the A. So that means we'll need five path objects or we could rename our masks, Plexus, hit M, and uh, rename our masks to all start with the same thing. So for the C and the A, we know that word's for Cannondale, so we're going to make all these masks start with C. So we'll do C underscore A, enter C underscore A2. And then this is for pro, so all we want all these masks to start with P, so P, P, uh, P underscore R, P underscore R2, P underscore O, and P underscore O2. So that way we can still see what letters they are, but they're grouped in the pro and Cannondale groups here. So in that case, we only need two path objects. So we need a mat. We need to select the mask name begins with, and do C for the Cannondale, and path object P for Pro. All right, great. Up oh, one thing we forgot to set up. Uh, we need to change the groups. C path is in group one. The P path should be in group two. We want to set them up. Now that we have these in different groups, uh, C path, group one, P path, group two, close these up in our lines renderer. Oops, we named that lines renderer. A lines renderer, we want to draw lines between the same group. That means it'll only draw lines between everything in group one and everything in group two and everything in any other group that it's assigned to. So you only need one lines renderer but it will affect different layers separately. Okay, now that we have that set up, now we want to be able to uh, distort the plexus out. So it will, so it will kind of fly out or it will start out and then form in to form the letters. Now we need to add a noise effector. And if you just add a noise effector, and change the amplitude, you'll see everything flies out. Okay, great. But then once you animate it back to the beginning, everything comes back to seat in its proper location all at the same time. And we don't want that. We want everything to build on sequentially. We want it the O and then the R and then the P and the A and the C, uh, you know, going right to left. We don't ever want everything to come on at once. So to solve that, we're going to use a light as a noise. So you can use lights for noise. So what we need to do is layer, new, light, and you want a point light. Let's change the intensity to 100% and the shadow darkness to 
and let's name this noise. Doesn't matter what the color is, but it needs to be a point light. So keep that in mind. Um, and also, we'll see, uh, once we get into the noise details, I'll show you something else. Uh, the intensity and the shadow darkness can be used to affect the fall off and, and um, the radius of the noise effector. Okay, so noise, plexus. We want, in the noise effector, we want to check use lights for noise. Uh, now, in this case, we're only going to have one light um, in this particular scene here, so it can be all lights, but it's good to, uh, to name them properly um, using, using the plexus with as many layers and stuff uh, as there is. It's, it's always good to keep everything, everything together. Uh, see here, um, the effector radius, uh, you can choose none or you can get it from the intensity of the light, um, which would be if you double click this again, you can boost its intensity all the way up. And basically what it does is creates a bigger circle around the light. So let me command shift H to bring the light up. So <clears throat> imagine do this right here. So here's the light, and this is just for visual purposes. Uh, imagine uh, this is the default radius, and it's not necessarily. I believe the 100% intensity translates to 100 pixel uh, diameter, but I can't be entirely sure of that. That's just my guess. So by default, let's just imagine that this is 100 pixels across, and then anything within this area of the light will be affected, and anything outside of this area of the light uh, will not be affected. Um, and then if we were to increase this to say 200%, then this would then increase to you know, 200% intensity and so on. So get rid of that. Uh, you can also use amplitude um, and, and uh, fade out and, uh, all these three things from the lights. Um, I like to use the amplitude in here and just use the effector radius from the light. So, uh, let's go to the light. Let's bump up our noise amplitude. And let's grab our light and move it around and nothing's happening. What you got to remember is when you create a plexus using 2D points like masks, it's created at a Z position of zero. Whereas when you create a light, set P for, for position, it doesn't default to a Z position of zero. Uh, right here, it's negative 444. So what we want to do is change that Z position to zero. And now that it's at zero, we can see it's starting to affect things, right? Awesome. So what we want this to do, and as we move the light through this, you can see it distort or displace and come back. So now you can see where we're going with this. We're going to start the light right about here. And then we'll animate it out this way till everything's formed in together. Now, I want it to start out a little bit farther than this. Uh, and, and in my example, you'll see I, uh, it starts, the O is, is about halfway formed in my example here. So I think what I want to do is see once the O is pretty much almost formed here, it's almost the whole thing is formed. So let's change that. Let's change this back to 100%. So that gives us a lot narrower, narrower, whoops, a lot narrower range to work with here. So see now that now when the O is halfway formed here, it's still fairly distorted on this side. Stop that. I want it out a little bit more. I, 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 it's too bunched together. I want it to start the plexus to start out a, a wider than this. So all we need to do is go back to the noise effector and boost the noise up, right? So there we go. I'm going to Command Shift H here again to hide the masks on the plexus object, just so we can see real quick. Uh, also, Command Shift H is the same thing as this little button right here. Hides 
uh, masks um, and uh, layer assistance. I know that's not the right word, but I can't come up with it right now. So, sorry. And so now we animate it across. Boom. It's in that position. And I like the way this is coming in by default here. But if you don't like the way this plexus is uh, shooting out to the sides, the, to the top here, there's plenty of other ways you can change it. You can, you can apply the, the noise to different axes, XY, XZ. Um, now, since we don't have a camera in this scene and there's no camera motion, the Z displacement isn't going to do quite as much as the X and Y displacement. Um, it, it defaults to XYZ, just, uh, you know, that's the default. Um, but you can change that. Another thing we can change, if you just don't like the look of it, is we twirl down the noise details. Uh, you can change the scale of the noise. Let's see, you want that point one. Uh, all, kinds of, all kinds of different things here. Um, you can offset things, you know, craziness here, I'll do that. Or you can simply change the random seed here of the noise. Uh, if you highlight that and just press the up arrow key or the down arrow key, you're going to get something totally different every time. So once you find out, like for example, this one, it's kind of coming across where the word's going to be. See, once we have um, pro cycling here, it's kind of coming in this way, and I and I want it to form in kind of from the left. So this one's not going to work out for me. Uh, so we can go through as much as we want, and you can tweak this to your heart's content. Uh, but I'm going to leave it at 10, which is the default there. Uh, we're going to turn off pro cycling again, real quick. And then, so now that we have that all set up, we have it the uh, light started in the position we wanted to start in. Let's make a keyframe here at the beginning. Um, want to go about uh, uh, let's go about a second in. Make that smaller. Uh, let's do about twenty frames. And then here we're gonna drag it back out. Now I don't know if it's just my machine or the way. Plexus works in general. Uh, I've only ever used it on my machine. But you saw earlier when we were moving the light around, it animated just fine. But once I set keyframes, it doesn't, it just kind of jumps around and looks weird. It just happens now. Once you render it through, it'll it'll play fine. Let me let me hit zero here to play through. Even then, it, it's not working quite right, but it will. Once it gets back to where it needs to be, it, it'll uh, it'll work out. There you go. Okay, so that's where it needs to be. Now, now that we have that, we're gonna turn our words back on. Now we're just gonna use masks to get the uh, letters to come on and the plexus to go away. So, uh, in order to mask plexus, you should really pre-comp it. Um, if you're using any lights as points or noise or any other effectors with your plexus, make sure you select them as well uh, before you pre-comp it. So we have the noise and the plexus. Let's command shift C and call this plexus pre-comp one. Bang. Okay. And you can see as soon as we pre-comped it, now we can scrub through it again and, and it's animating just fine. So cool. Okay, uh, I want to do separate masks on each of these. So let's do uh, pro cycling first. Let's just draw a mask. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. And let's feather a little bit. Maybe let's do five pixels for now. We're going to do about there. And let's do a mask path, set a keyframe, wait till it's go back to where it's totally built, right about there. 
and animate that back. Now, my mask is obviously should be on subtract. Now, once we get rid of that, boom, builds on, right? Great. All right, now let's do the same for the CA. Select pen tool, pretty much the same shape here. There, let's hit M, subtract, shift F for feather, five pixels, mask, path, keyframe, and like that. So you're gonna have to play with this a little bit. We'll see you now, let me zoom in here real quick. Now, I don't want my, see, I think the uh, PRO looks pretty good once everything is, once the plexus settles into place, then the letter comes on, which is cool. But I think the C in the top, I think that uh, that finishes up a little bit early. Uh, see how the C kind of is formed and, and it takes a little bit longer for the plexus to get back into place. So we can just, oops, keep confusing my A and V, flipping back and forth between Final Cut and here. There we go, Cannondale, mask. Um, and all we need to do is just drag this keyframe out a little bit. There we go. Now it's a little bit more accurate. Bang, okay. Now all we need to do for the plexus is the same thing. Let's just do a, let's do a, ba -ba 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 -ba. one of these, one of these, one of these, here, one of these, here, here, here. Here, here. bring this out. Now the thing you need to remember about the plexus mask is at the beginning you want to make sure that you're not blocking stuff in the beginning because the plexus shoots out in different directions like for example you don't want to keep this one down here because you know at the end you're gonna be fine but at the beginning you're gonna be cutting off the beginning of that that plexus there. So um, keyframing this one it was just a little bit more um, particular, but not that much. So let's mask, shift F for feather. Let's feather it about five again. Let's do a mask path here. And as we finish, let's finish it up. So now we can see the PRO looks pretty good, but again, the CA is, isn't quite right. So uh, let's grab our mask again. Let's um, maybe keep it here. Oops. Over there. Might have been better to use two masks in this case, but I started with one and I don't really need to go back and do a second one. It's, uh, it'll work out. There, I think that's pretty good. Let's deselect. Now, there's the basic build on. Now, if you remember, or if you happen to see, in this version here, 
the titles come on, and then a little bit extra flies out here from the C and the A. So we need to create another plexus for these, and that'll only take a few seconds. So let's do that real quick. So that's our plexus pre-comp. Uh, also, I just find it looks better if your letter build plexus is below your text. Let's make a new plexus. Uh, I'll call this plexus two, just so we have it. Effect, last effect, plexus. Um, and to make it easy on ourselves, uh, we still have our text here. I just want the C and the A here, so let's M, C, A, A. Copy, plexus, paste. Boom. Okay, plexus two. Geometry, paths, all masks. Uh, we don't need to worry about these not being connected, so good to go. Points on each mask. On this one, I want even less. I think I want um, maybe six. Da, 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 da. I want this to be blacks again. And shift H to hide our thing. So we can kind of see there they are. Awesome. If we boost this up, there's our letters. Let's do, let's maybe do eight. Mm, we'll see. Uh, for percent opacity, let's do uh, one again. Let's do a lines renderer. No, not quite that many. Um, let's do six vertices. Let's do um, yeah, maybe fifty. Uh, that like that. off cool smooth a little bit awesome uh, we need a noise effector we're gonna make it a light we're gonna call this mm, noise again uh, and we can do that since we're gonna have it in a different layer uh, if we kept the other plexus in with the other lights uh, the other light that was named noise, and if we go back to this pre-comp here, this light was named noise, uh, we'd want to name our next light differently, but since it's a different one, let's name it noise. You could do uh, A noise, B noise, C noise. Since you don't need to do write the entire thing, that uh, the entire name that the uh, layer or the light is called, it, you know, it could just be A. Uh, the layer could just start with A, even though the actual layer name is A, noise, or A, whatever you want it to be. So, noise, cool, layer, new, light, noise, point light, white, 100%, 100%. Remember, change your position to zero. Zoom out here a little bit. Zoom out here a little bit. And shift H, bring the light back up. Bring this over here. This down here, plexus, noise effector, boom, like this. We want it to, like in the example, we want it to fly, where are we? We want it to have it go up, kind of up and away. Boom. And also, you can see, take note, after it flies out there, you can see that it keeps moving. It keeps expanding a little bit. So what we're going to do, the initial motion is from the noise effector, or from the, the animation of the light, rather. Uh, and we want to make sure this is timed up right, first of all. Let's do this. Once these are together, we want it to shoot out right about here. So I'm going to put the light right in the middle of this, and this will give us a good idea of where it's going. Plexus, hide those again, keep changing this. Okay, and that one goes up, so 13 is kind of a good choice. Uh, I like 22. 22 is pretty good. 
So now, as you can see, we animate this. Boom. It's going to fly out that way. And once you get too far, it's going to go back in one place because of the intensity, right? So let's maybe change the intensity here to 150%. Uh, maybe even 200%. Now as we animate this, let's turn the light back on so you can see what I'm doing here. So we're going to animate that up. So we're going to start here at uh, 554. And we want it to end I want it to end before it starts contracting again. So right there. So it was at 554 uh, and 364. So 554 keyframe 364. Bang. And we want this to happen quick. Uh, so that's four frames there, but maybe let's let's say six frames. Boom. So we want it to shoot out of there quick. Uh, but something else we want to do to keep it moving for the duration is you need to animate the noise amplitude. So let's set a keyframe at the beginning when it's there. At the end, let's animate this maybe to there. And you can see, because of the settings we have, uh, some of the lines start to disappear, which is kind of cool. And, and they get thinner because of the, uh, because of the thickness and the opacity over distance. So, so it'll shoot out and then kind of keep going. Right? Okay, great. Now, on solo, on solo, on solo. There we go. And, we don't want this to show up until here, right? Boom. And actually, because we don't need that plexus to be there until we want it to shoot out, right? And maybe let's even uh, animate the opacity. One, two, three keyframes, opacity, and back down to zero. So as it animates out, there it goes. So to animate, the letters draw on, and then animate out. Great. So now that I see that we're about uh, 40 minutes into this tutorial here, I'm going to stop it, and I'm going to show you in part two of this tutorial how we're going to get this text connected into this shot and. Uh, get the lines to show up how we need to be. We're gonna use Mocha for the tracking real quick, and I'll show you a cool little script that I learned about to convert null objects into lights, and uh, we'll finish this shot up. So come back, check it out, thanks.